Anyways, hey guys, it's me, Mimic Jack 24 here today. I just wanted to say I'm sorry once again for not making this reaction video on uh, Friday since I actually kind of swept in and I had to go somewhere. Then, you know, I had a whole busy day. Then I got to go see God Godzilla X Kong, which that was quite nice, and I'll talk more about that on Wednesday. On Wednesday, but for now. For now, I saw saw my boy Sam has posted posted a video eight days ago. Granted, I watched it on that day when it posts because, well, I don't have much to to view. <clears throat> but uh, <coughs> hold on a sec, guys. No, sorry, sorry. I I had a bit of a bit of phlegm there. I'm still recovering from my cold. Anyways, um, all of the copyright in this video belongs to Sam and Ella. And Sam, if you're watching, thank you. And also, I am not making any blame over your content whatsoever. Just reacting to it. And, well, because, A, I actually do like your stuff. And, plus, I knew about you way, and I do mean this, like, way before the pandemic. I, I'm saying, like, 2017 is when I, when I first heard of you. So, yeah, for those that don't know, I'm basically a bit of a mega fan. So, let's see how it goes. <laughs> Hey, Majors, so I'd Wait a sec. We became Majors now? Okay, okay, and now I just feel old. Granted, I am becoming older. It happens with time, but man, that just feels like that. I'd like to start off with a little biology lesson. When a species finds itself living on an island, it can start to evolve in strange ways based on the different pressures applied by the new environment. That is true. This is called island syndrome, and while, yep. while it can manifest in a lot of ways, the biggest driving force is often a lack of predators. For example, the dodo lost its ability to fly since there was nothing to flee from. The same- Yeah. As Iowan syndrome is something that also happens in the paleontological field, which is why I'm actually very familiar with the concept. But it's quite good. it's quite strange when you realize that the main predator of Haptag Island wasn't even a dinosaur, or or even a crocodilian ancestor. No, instead it was just a giant archosaur. Uh, no, no, not Arcus or no, no. That that includes literally everything I'm discussing. It was a giant as Uh, I forget its name, but it's huge. Killed a field mouse, got twice as big since it no longer had to hide. And with no one around to bully them, the Sardinians started putting maggots in their cheese. Me huh? Why? Kazumartsu. Literal translation, rotten cheese. Okay, why eat this then? It's made by taking a perfectly good wheel of pecorino and letting a special type of fly lay eggs in it. The fly Wait, why is there a cheese fly? Uh oh. Oh no. I I I should have known from this title that it was gonna be quite a bit gross. Fly babies then work to partially digest the cheese, rendering it goopy and wet and maybe quite tasty and worm filled. Now, cheese as a concept is already quite suspect. It's already agreed. Clotted milk that you fill with bacteria and mold and let sit for a while. But yep. Cheese is safe and delicious. Cheese that is true. This is my friend. I trust cheese. So my guard would be down around Kazumartsu. I've learned to look past a cheese's oh. childhood. Strange upbringings are what give them their character. But it turns out, those maggots are still alive. And if you don't chew- Oh, oh yeah. Now, how did I forget this? <clears throat> <laughs> sorry. But for those that don't know, and I'm sorry about this. I should have brought this up earlier, but since- been a while since I did a uh, Sam, uh, Sam and Nell reaction, so most of y'all probably have your guard down, but Sam is more meant for, like, teenagers, so at times he might curse, so don't, if you can't handle cursing, then I don't suggest watching the video, but 
so on and so forth, I'm not one to judge. Well enough, they can cause enteric myiasis, which is a fancy term for fly larvae living in your intestines. Mm. Symptoms are similar to food poisoning, except with the added psychic pain of knowing that, again, your bowels are full of squiggly new friends. It's for this reason that Kazumatsu is banned in the EU and elsewhere. Hooray. Black market still exists, which is wild, and it's not a small one. In 2019, the- Hold on a sec. Currently, the- Huh? Wow. The illicit Kazumatsu trade was estimated to be worth 2 to 3 million euros annually. Personally, I would just do it prohibition style, like definitely don't put these fly eggs on this sumptuous wheel of pecorino. But if you do, you absolutely shouldn't keep it warm and damp for a week. But although it's- I mean, to be fair with prohibition, it, that, that was a bit different, but... Yeah, I actually, I actually would have gone with what Sam did because that would at least be creative, creative and fun for those that would still want to eat it. Traditional to leave the larvae alive when you eat your mag and cheese. Some consumers still prefer them dead, shockingly. In that case, one puts the cheese in a sealed bag, and when the maggots run out of oxygen, they writhe around and fling themselves all over the place. This is heard as a distinct pitter-patter against the walls of the bag, and when the sound stops, the contents are ready to eat like popcorn. Shark fin soup is one most of us have heard about already, mostly in reference to its effect on shark populations and the wastefulness that goes into making- Ooh. Yeah, I, I hate to say this, but what part of the fin is yummy? Oh, I say you, you're weaving out most of the meat. If you're going to at least eat shark, at least eat, eat the rest of it. Don't just eat one of the scrap pieces. Until recently, though, I never looked into the nature of the dish itself. I figured, right, the fins are just the only part of the shark worth eating. Big whoop. It's probably not much different from, like, swordfish. Apparently, though, I had it backwards. Shark fins aren't even meat. They're made almost entirely of cartilage and collagen. They are the last part we should be eating. That's why it's only made into soup, because without being soaked in broth, it has zero flavor or nutritional value on its own. Their only redeeming quality is their unique mouthfeel due to how stringly the collagen grows in structures called ceratotrichia. The texture is This is honestly a bit shocking for me because well I knew I knew that they didn't have bones in there. I just wasn't certain if they literally had any muscle on the dorsal fin or not. But man, that seems wasteful been described as somewhere between chewy and crunchy, which I find describes most things, actually. Other adjectives present on Wikipedia include snappy, gelatinous, and sinewy. The exact sensation of eating this substance remains a mystery to me, and the unintended side effect of all this research is that I now really want to try it. Like, I mean, I don't blame Sam, but then again, I have been in the position where I've researched something, and then really wanted to try it, so... I, I don't blame him. I don't blame him, but then again, I don't like the difficulty of shark fin soup. It's a big trade. I've got to be the one that's wrong. There is imitation shark fin soup available, but I've already decided that it's not nearly as good. So I've come up with a compromise to this controversy. Everyone on Earth gets just one bite. Say there's 10 bites to a fin, 4 fins to a shark, 200 million sharks die, sure, a necessary casualty. I mean, he's... I mean, he's doing the math. Then we can end the practice forever. All done. You can finally rest, Mr. Ming. Come here, baby. Aw. Aki. What? Aki. What? Uh-oh. What is that fruit? Why does it look like that? Where? Aki. The Aki is a fruit originally from West Africa, which is most commonly associated with Jamaican cuisine, where it- Oh, that's why. It appears in such dishes as Aki and saltfish. These alien kidneys here are called the arils, and they're the only part of the fruit that's actually eaten. Their flavor is on the savory side, being described as kind of nutty or bean-like. What makes the Aki controversial, though, is the effects it can cause when prepared improperly. If the arils are allowed to completely ripen, they're harmless. But if you eat them too early, or don't thoroughly clean off all the non arrow stuff, they can cause Jamaican vomiting sickness. This disease doesn't sound real, it sounds like it belongs next to Agreed. Eastern sweats and Tangerian bone grindings, but that's actually an official term. Oof. How did that become an actual term? Oh, well. And as for symptoms, it does what it says on the tin. 
plus maybe death. While Aki-based mm. products aren't outright illegal in the United States, they are very tightly regulated, and the raw fruit itself cannot be imported. So if you're American and want to try it, your options are fully cooked canned ackee or going to Florida, where a few people grow it domestically. Next week... I say go to Florida. At least you'll get a better trip out of that. Have bird's nest soup. This is another one that Wait, I... Wait, what? ...vaguely heard of, and for years I just assumed the name was a playful metaphor, like ants on a log or shit on a shingle. Turns out, no... Wait, is that... Huh? I mean, I've heard of ants on a log, not the second one. That I have to look into. This dish contains an actual bird nest, not like a pile of twigs like I was picturing, but rather a specific type of nest only made by certain species of swiftlets. These nests are mostly made out of mucins, which are a set of proteins that, among other things, serve to thicken all those wonderful secretions our bodies make. There's a little bit in human saliva, a little bit more in mucus, and in swiftlet saliva, look out, pal. So all the swiftlet does is it finds a nice wall, starts <laughs> laying out fat strings of slobber, which dry, and eventually she's got a nice place to roost. That is, right up until some gourmand says, Ugh, today I crave bird spit. Uh, you can keep the eggs, though. And they then reconstitute it back. Oh. I, I just don't like his voice for that. That, that was creepy. But to be fair and honesty, uh, yeah, that's probably the bird's perspective on it into its original gelatinous texture. Unfortunately, these nests can't enter the U.S. since, believe it or not, eating bird saliva is a great way to catch bird flu, and- Oh. Alright, I am actually quite surprised that the U.S. actually has done some great stuff for itself for once. Hey guys, small steps are the right way to go. Granted, we still have to follow more or less Europe's example. Yeah, America's a bit fat. Just saying. Now the time has come to speak of the Ortolan. The Ortolan is a kind of bunting, which is a sort of passerine, which is a type of bird. They're birds. Like many animals, they have a long... Oh, no, not this one. Oh, ooh. Ooh. Talk about controversial. This... No, this one is controversial. For those that don't know, Sam's going to explain it, but for those that already know, oh boy. Yeah, it was a, this was a bound to happen thing. As it's one of the most tragic things ever. Ever and probably the most messed up up way of eating an animal ever and to be honest this is coming from a guy that that regularly eats meat on a daily basis basis and yeah i can safely say even for me i wouldn't eat that that is just quite bad and yeah which is a type of bird they're birds. Like many animals, they have a long history of being eaten by the French. But what? Mm, well, I mean, I can't really defend you, for, you France, from this one. But then again, then again, birds have been eaten by nearly every nation ever. So, yeah, yeah. What separates the ortolan from your average squab or pheasant is the unique way in which it is prepared and eaten. They're typically caught with nets and kept in the dark, which causes them to overeat for some reason. Once it's about twice as fat, the entire bird is then thrown into a container of brandy, alive, and sealed in. While this serves to marinate the creature, it also drowns in the process, thereby killing one bird with no stones. Oh no. Oh boy. Um... You guys can clearly see why I don't like this. And for those that don't know, yes, this is the type of bird that Roger wanted to eat for one episode of American Dad. Yeah, it wasn't a joke. The ortolan is then roasted, plucked, and presented whole to the consumer, who inserts the carcass into their mouth, feet first. As they chew, one hand continues holding the bird's head, while the other picks out the larger bones. This whole ritual is usually performed with a towel or large napkin over one's head. There's a few explanations for the purpose of the towel. Some say it's just there to keep the aromas in, while others say it's there to, quote, shield from God's eyes the shame of such a decadent and disgraceful act. 
Yeah, this one I'm okay with not trying. You agreed. Actually, notable fans of this dish include, not joking, Bill Cosby and the guy who invented the lobotomy. Oh, no. Well, it kind of makes sense. I, I, I guess, I guess this will. I, I will have to say, uh, well, I will say this. Um, how do I make jokes out of this? Sam, since, you know, I don't have good material, and since I know you have better material than me, go for it. Ah, to be part of that social club. Our mission is to eat birds whole and then make people not remember things. Killing or to... That was a bit tame, but eh, fair enough. Hans was banned across the EU in 2007. Not for any ethical reason, but because French people did this so much that the entire Ortolan population was threatened. Thankfully, Oof. as of 2018, their conservation status is under least concern. So hopefully the French can get back to it soon. Anyway. Uh-oh. Did the French get back to that soon? Well, maybe the Ortolan would have had extinct... That would be one way to go. Anyway, that's all I have for today. Till next time. All right. Thank you, Salmonella. For those that don't know, I'll leave a link in the description for Sam. And once again, all the guy belongs to Sam. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.